Hi guys, Samantha from JCB Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you a cool tutorial using PBA Paint and Microfrills. So the first thing we want to do is create a PBO Paint skin where we can then take this die cutter that I have with the little dragonfly and we can cut out the little dragonflies from the skin. So that's the first bit that we're going to do. So I've got a sheet of Teflon here. Silicon will work as well and I'm going to be putting my PBO paint on there. So I've gone and chosen some colours. So I have this Caribbean blue. Here you can see the name and you can see what it's going to look like. I also have some turquoise. You can see the name there. Um, let's see. I also have some moonstone. That's kind of a silvery colour. And then you're also going to need some paint for later on. So I think that um, those three and maybe this one. Let me see which one's this one. This one's almond green. So I'm thinking those four will be for our dragonflies. And then we might use those later. But for the most part those are going to be for the dragonfly. And then I've got some others over here. And let's see which ones are these. Um, I've got pearl green, which is this one. Leaf. And I do believe this one's emerald. Let me see if I can find that in there. Yes, emerald. So I've got these three that are going to be used for other PB, another PBO paint technique uh, later. So you'll want to keep these separate. Okay. So I'm going to start with the Caribbean blue. I'm going to open it up and you can see that it needs a pretty good mix up and then you can see that the markers have all settled around over there. So I'm just going to bring over a skewer and you want to give that a really good mix and you're going to do it for all the colours that you want to use on the skin. And the better you mix, the better because it means that the effect will be better later on. So just sit here and mix really well. Make sure you get all those powders all swirled up together and then I'll show you what to do after these are all mixed. Okay, so they're all mixed up and so I'm going to start with the blues and this is the Caribbean blue. I'm just going to drip a bit here and I'm not going to join these up. Here, I put that to the side, and then you want to wipe off your skewer because you don't want your colours getting mixed up. Then I'm going to bring over the turquoise. Kind of drip that there, drip a little bit there, and you'll see that it gets drawn in whenever it touches the next one. And I'm just kind of dripping that around. It doesn't have to be too specific. There we go. And I'll pop that aside, wipe off my brush, bring over that silver. Could be a little bit more specific where I put that. You can muck around with it as much as you want. Now yeah, I'll see if I can drip that around. And I think I'm going to leave out that almond green actually. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift it, lift up these taped ends, and I'm actually going to just stretch this so that it pulls out a little bit. Okay, then I'll tap those ends back down and I'll lift up these ends back here. I'll bring that up as well. And then just blow a little. There we go. And that's just how I'm going to mix it up. 
let me bring over a piercing pin. Just swirl these things around a little bit. I don't want the colours mixed together, but I do want swirls in them because we're going to be working with a very small amount of um, space when it comes to our little dragonflies, and so we need to include as much um, detail as we can into this. There we go. I'll just wipe that off and that will be our little skin. And so we should be able to get maybe about six dragonflies out of there. So that needs to sit and dry for maybe around three hours. We'll see how long it is. But you'll want to close up your PBO paints and things and pack that away and leave that to dry. In the meantime, while that is busy curing, we can move on to creating our polymer clay pendant. It's just that you need to get this dry. Okay, so in the next part we're going to need a Skinner blend of black to pearl white, which is what I have here. And you're also going to need your cutter for your bead. Now I'm using my largest rectangle cutter, as you can see here. And what I want to do is I just want to position it Right here, so I can see what I'm doing. Just want to position it so that I get some black and some white in here. Okay, and now press down. I keep never pressing hard enough on these things. There we go. Okay, so that is our piece and now what we want to do is we want kind of a squiggly line here and so I'm going to use my flexible tissue blade to give me a line there we are. and we'll cut there we are just keep that nice and neat and just be careful with that and you'll bring over your blade and lift that up and remove these two parts separately yeah and i'm just going to pop those over to the side then i'm going to bring over a sheet of pearl white and this was rolled out in the thickest setting of my pasta machine and I'll bring over my cutter again and you'll bring over one half of your design just lay that on gently and smooth bring your cutter up I just need to have my head here so I can see what I'm doing there we go and press down And then just check the side, make sure that you're happy with it. I'm just going to use my blade to smooth along it. And on the side too. Okay, and so this is going to be where we put our dragonflies. And then this side is where we're going to have another little PBO technique. And I'm just making sure that this is symmetrical and everything. And the sides are nice and smooth as much as I can get them. Okay, and then I'm going to take this other piece that I have here and I'm going to create another one. There we are. So now we have two pieces that we can work with. So I just want to lift this one up. So that they are clear of the tile. remove this excess quickly okay then check the sides again and just smooth off with your finger if you need to pick off any little bits and pieces that are left okay so 
how happy with that one. Do the same with this one. And then we are going to go and collect some mica powder so that we can put some on this white area over here. Now, what you can do is you can maybe cure this piece and this piece before you put on the white backing, but then it's not going to stick as nicely as you want. So I've chosen to put them on raw. Uh, well, we put the mica powders around here, so it means that the mica powder might get stuck on here, but that's fine because you can sand it off later on because it is erased. So that is my thinking on the subject. So I'll bring over those mica powders. Okay, so I'm going to be using Spring Green Perlex and Sky Blue Perlex. You can use any mica powder you want, but these are the colours that I'm using. So I'm going to start with the blue. I'm just going to take my brush, dab it in, and I'm going to start by dabbing this blue on. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and make a blend. So you want to put the blue on, then the green, and then we will overlap them. But you do want a pretty um, good cover of mica powder down here. So just take it in multiple layers and make sure that you really rub that in and make sure that it's quite nice and take it to about the halfway point over there and take the green up to the halfway point and then we'll blend it so i'll finish up with this one then i'll put the green on and then i'll show you how to blend it okay and so i brushed the green over over here as well and so now what we're going to do is we're just gently going to overlap them a bit. And just brush it on and get it to blend. It's going to give you a chunky blend but it will give you a bit of a blend. Then we'll bring over some of the blue blend that there as well and there you can see it's kind of blending and so just work at it until you're happy with it and then when that's done we can move on to creating our bale okay so I'm basically happy with that then you want to take your brush and you want to really brush quite hard to get rid of any excess powder. Okay, then go and close up your pot and get ready for the bale. Okay, so now the next bit that we want to tend to is the bale. So I'm going to just pop that one off to the side and gently lift this one up too and pop that off to the side for the moment. And I've got another sheet or a piece of that Skinner blend and this was rolled out in my middle setting which is a four to kind of thin it out a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut away these little edges that don't look so good and cut away over there and there. Let me just get that straight. Then I'm going to bring over my skewer, flip, and then roll this on. And it's a little bit difficult because it doesn't like sticking. There we are. It's one. Let me just chop that off. And then we'll have those two meet up nicely. Okay, and then you want to take a little bit of time to just smooth off over here. Like that. And then gently work that off the skewer. And then when it's on the tile, tap on the top to flatten out that bit. Okay, and then I'm going to make a few and then I'm going to choose which ones I like the best. Okay. 
So I've made a few. So let me just bring this over. And I like this one, I think, for this. Yes. Okay. So choose the one that you like. Then pop it back onto the skewer. And then just smooth it out. You know, fingerprints and things like that. And then take that seam and make sure that it's pointing down. And let me just just need to tap this to make sure that it is all nice and good. And then you want to position that on the top of your bead. And I'm just taking it along the back side so that I can see better where this center is. And you'll gently work that off your skewer. Now that's in the center. And this is just a very delicate process. Okay, and then you can put it in the skewer again and gently use the skewer to press it against the sides. Okay. Then you'll also take your skewer, or not skewer, your knife, and just gently trim those sides. Make them nice and neat again. And bring the skewer back in and just round that out again. Okay, so I think that looks good. So just have a look at it, see what you think. If there's any areas that don't seem right to you, just fix those up. But you want to do that before you bake it, so just spend a bit of time and make sure that it looks right to you. Okay. I think I'm pretty happy with it. So what you would do now is you would pop this in the oven for about 40 minutes at pretty much recommended temperature to bake and then we'd apply a backing later after we've done that and um, I'll do the same with the other bead and then when we've applied the backing and we've tended to the sides and things then I can show you what we're going to do with the PEBO paint on it. So just make sure you smooth away all fingerprints because the less sanding there is the better. And then I'll go pop that in the oven. Now for the next bit, while those pieces are in the oven, we want to take some pearl white and choose some alcohol ink colours to go with them because we're going to tint them and we are going to make some mica frills. So I have sailboat blue, mermaid, turquoise and clover. And that's what we're going to use to tint these. So we'll bring over each one individually and we'll drip some alcohol ink on and then just leave that to dry and you'll take each one and put a fair amount of alcohol ink onto it and this is a really nice way to cover your metallic clothes There we are. Now I'm just going to take my finger and rub that around and I'm just going to dry that off on a wet wipe to the side so that I don't contaminate each of these colours as I do this. You can see the colours are quite nice too. And there we are. Then you want to let those dry as much as you possibly can and then we'll mix them in. So I've let them sit for a minute or so and now they're dry enough for us to mix. So that one the ink got under it so I have to just leave that one off to the side for the moment but the ones where the ink didn't get under those ones will be fine. 
So I'll start with this one. And I like to hand mix them because I don't want to get a pasta machine all messed up. I prefer to get my fingers messed up. <laughs> um, and I don't really want to wear gloves with this because I'm going to have to keep changing my gloves. Whereas I can just wipe my hands off. Okay, and then once you've got the alcohol ink kind of mixed in like that, where it's not going to go spurting out, then you can take it through your pasta machine and use your pasta machine to mix it in. So let me just do that one quickly. And here's what it looks like. So you can see that it's quite a nice light colour, and the more alcohol ink you add, the stronger the colour will be. So I'll do the same with all of these. Now I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so here are the colours all mixed up. So that was the clover, this is the mermaid, then the turquoise, and then the sailboat blue. So now we want to take a piece of each of these and just roll it into a cylinder like that. And you can variate, vary these pieces as you can go, as you go. So I'm just going to take them and roll them into cylinders and then I'm not going to put them in the order that I have them now. I want them all to be kind of mixed up a bit. And then you put them together. Okay, so now that they're in cylinders, you'll just take them and vary them just like this. It doesn't matter if you have them in any particular order. You just want it so that it looks nice. There we are. Then you'll take that and write through a pasta machine from that end to that end. Then you're going to fold it and run that through again. Fold again and roll again and continue until you have a light blend. Okay, and here's the light blend. So now I'm just going to pop that onto our tile. Make sure it's stuck down firmly. Then I'll give it a light spray with some water. And I'm going to bring over Core Rollers Winter's Frost. And I got this from Linda's Art Spot. And what I'm going to do, just going to start from one end. And I'm going to start rolling. And I'm pressing down as hard as I can to make sure that I get a good impression. Okay. Then you want to dry that up. And then you'll bring over the small tissue blade. And you'll shave off some microfrills. And just make them small like that. And this is what's going to go along with our little dragonflies that we're going to cut out later. So you just want small ones and I'm putting them off to the side there. Okay, and then that's all we need at, for the moment until our beads come out of the oven and then we can finish those off. And once they're finished off we can apply our PBO technique that I was talking about earlier and when that other bit of PBO paint is dried we can cut out our little dragonflies and do a whole bunch of cool things. So 
So for the moment, I just want to cut out these small little marker holes. And you can see that there's a nice marker shift under here, so you can use this technique to make a marker shift um, and colour your clay to whatever, whatever colour you want. So it's definitely a cool little thing that you can use. Okay, so our beads are out of the oven and now we are ready to move on to the next bit. So you can see that, that mica powder still does come off, so you just want to be a little careful over here um, because some of it will rub off, so don't be playing with it too much. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to remove our bale, and I've already done that with this one. And that's pretty easy, you just need to gently pop it off. Okay, and it's made a little mark there for us to put it straight back in, but you do want to just pop it off. Okay, then I'm going to bring over my Skinner blend that was left over, and this was run out on my third thinnest setting, and it should be enough, let's see, to cut up two of these. Actually, you know what? There's not enough here to cut out two of these, so I'll just put a different backing on the other one. But anyway, cut out one of those, put that off to the side, and have a look back here. And now you want to put some liquid clay on the back here, just a tad of it, a little bit of it, to make this stick a little bit better. And I like to use Bacon Bond liquid clay for this, because it's nice and thick and sticky. Um, a more runny one might be a little bit more taxing to work with because it will run all over the place and your piece will slide. You don't want it to slide, you just want it to stick. So just add a little bit like that, so it's like glue. And then you want to rub that bacon bond over the surface and you want like a really thin film of it over the back. So you can see there that's quite thin. So I'll just rub that all over. And you really want to do rub it all over so that you get it across the entire surface if you can. Just like that. Okay, then I'm going to have a look at my Skinner Blend on this side because I'd like to mimic it. So I'll put the black at the top here and then I'm just gently going to press that on and as I'm pressing I'm actually pulling on it slightly so that it's larger than my bead and this will give me some room to work with there we go and I'm also trying to smooth out any air bubbles that I can feel because sometimes you do get air bubbles and there you can see that it isn't um, it doesn't match completely. Then I'm going to fold it over the sides, these little pieces. Then I'm actually going to smear them along the sides if I can to fill in any gaps if I can. And this will give us a domed back, and if there's any obvious cracks and things, this will highlight it for us. There we are. Okay. And now I don't really want to smear along these sides because it's going to um, create a border that I don't want. So I'm just checking for any obvious gaps in the clay piece that we have. And I don't think we have any. So it looks fine. So I'll tend to that in a minute. Just busy finishing off this back quickly. Okay, then you want to go with your finger and you gently want to smooth the back. so that you don't have any more fingerprints or things like that. So you can use your blade to cut it if you want, to make it um, a flush cut, but I like that it has a little beveled edge to it. Okay, 
Then I'm just going to bring my blade over and I'm gently going to scrape along these sides to remove any excess clay that I don't want. And I'm actually scraping some of the baked clay off as well. So over here where I would have had to sand, I'm busy scraping to get rid of any of those mica powder bits and pieces. So here you can see there's a little bit of a, a mark over there. I'm going to scrape with my blade and see if I can get rid of that. There we are. And this is another way to tidy up your edges. Okay. Now let me just get this out the way. I'm just going to roll it to get them all kind of stick together. And I'll bunch that out of the way. And now we can just finish off this back area. So you can see it's got quite a few fingerprints, but this front part looks fine. But that was mostly about tending to the sides a bit as well. Okay, so I'm just going to hold it on the sides and I'm going to take my finger and I'm gently going to smooth. to get rid of as many of the obvious fingerprints as I can. Okay, then you want to texture the back. Um, this is optional, if you don't want to, you can, you don't have to, but texturing the back will mean that you definitely don't have to sand it later on, and so it's just something that I like to do. And my preferred texture is this nice sponge texture that I got from Towards Polymer Clay. And I'm just going to press it along the back here and it just gives it a light texture that isn't going to feel weird on the skin. And it's not rough like a sandpaper texture, it's a little bit more soft than that. You can use any texture you want, but this one is my preferred one. I'm just going over and making sure that I give it a good texture and then I'll press from the front as well and there you can see that texture now okay then just take your finger and gently smooth along the sides one more time because this piece of clay might have got a little distorted and it might have come over the edges again so just make sure that it is in its right spot before you put it in the oven And then I'm just going to check the sides. Like there's a little bit of clay there that I want to clean up. A bit of clay there as well. Okay, and then I'm going to put it in the oven like this. And then when that's finished, I can apply the bale again. And so I'll do the same with this one. Okay, so while those in the oven, I want to show you the PBO paint, which has been curing for roughly um, 24 hours now. So I'll just bring that over. And you can see that I have the mica frills over here as well. So I'll just move those out of the way. Now this, you should be able to pick off, and you can see that it comes off cleanly, and that is the back. And here is what it looks like now that it has cured. Now it's not cured enough for us to uh, cut out the dragonflies just yet because it is, you'll still, it's still tacky. Um, you, it should feel kind of papery, so I'll bring over one as an example if I can find it. But it shouldn't be able to stick to the surface of your tile like this. So you can see it's stuck and I have to use the blade to pick it up. So if it's still sticking to your tile like that, it is not cured. But you should be able to pick it up and see what it looks like and see if you're happy with it. So just wanted to show you that, but that needs to cure for probably another 24 hours before we can actually use it. So here's an example of one that is fully cured, and that was 
cured on the Teflon as well and you can see when I lay it on the tile you can move it around really easily um, it's a little stiff as well it feels kind of like um, a thin piece of card maybe one of those ones that you use to write someone a letter or a birthday card you know feels kind of like that and so that is uh, what you're looking for so if I brought this one over you can just see well I can feel the difference but you can see that there's a difference so you want to wait for it to be like that so I'll just pop that away and now I do want to cut dragonflies out of this one I'll just show you how to do that quickly uh, this was done with silver and that almond green that I decided not to put into the other one so I'll just show you how to cut dragonflies out of this one so I'm just going to pop open that and then you want to slide your PVO paint in there and actually you can see it from the bottom here what's going on there you can see that it's there and then cut and there you can see there's your little PBO paint dragonfly so if I bring that up hopefully you can see that we have those little cells in there and so that is what we're going to be doing with the other one now you can also see that you're going to have little bits of PBO paint left um, keep those I'll be showing a tutorial later on I'm not sure when I will be doing a tutorial on it but keep them because you definitely can do something with them and I'll see if I can do a tutorial later on showing you guys what to do with them so now I'm just gonna pop this back in here and cut out another little dragonfly and that is basically what you would do with your PVA paint once it was cured so I'll do that with the other one once it's finished curing and we can then use it in our beads but they look cute okay so this bead is out of the oven and the back's looking quite nice so next part is to tend to the sides so I don't want to smear it because it's going to make too much of a border for me and I don't really need to smear it because there aren't any gaps in here I just want to colour it black so I did a little test and I decided that using some high grade acrylic paint will do the job for me so I'm just going to squeeze out a little close the cap and this is the one that I'm using and you're going to want a tiny tiny little brush and you're going to paint each of the sides and you want a fairly thick layer of paint now try to get it only on the sides and not on the front And I'll just pop that brush over there then you'll just take your finger and gently run back and forth over the paint and what this is going to do is it's going to smooth it out and it's going to create the layer nice and even it's also going to give you some paint on your back finger brush that across the back of your bead and this will highlight the texture just a little and it'll also tie in the fact that we're using paint on the sides so you do want to do that okay then just check the front that looks fine for the moment Let me just check that and then if you do see any problems just bring over a wet wipe and gently wipe away any paint okay and then you'll repeat that on all of your sides and you will also highlight the back like I showed you just a second ago so if you haven't managed to highlight it all by the time you finish the sides just dab a little bit of paint onto your finger you don't need a thick you don't need a lot just a light to touch dab that onto the back if you're onto the front of your finger and then just gently swipe that across the back here 
you can see that it highlights that texture quite nicely. And that's optional, you don't have to do that, but I think it looks quite nice. So that is how I'm going to tend to these sides. Okay, so here it is, all cleaned up. And here are what these look like. Now they're not completely dry yet, but they look nice. And here's what the back looks like. You can sand that if you want later. Now, we want to figure out where our bale was the first time around. Here it is. Then you'll bring over a wet wipe. We just get that. And you just want to wipe the area where your bale was. And get rid of the paint that's there. Because you want, we're going to adhere the bale back on. And so we want the bale to be touching the clay, not the paint, because that will peel off. Okay. Just wipe that up. Okay. Then you'll bring the bale, and then we just find our front. Yeah. And you're going to want your bacon bond again. And just dab a line of bacon bond across the surface here. There we go. And then pop your bale on. There we are. Okay, then I'm just going to bring over that bacon bond again and I'm just going to squeeze a bit out onto the tile and I'm just going to bring over my brush get a little bit of that onto the brush and I'm just going to dab that around the back of the bale Give it some extra security. There we are. Okay, now I'll check the front and I'm just going to clean that up a bit. There we are, that looks good. Okay, and then check from the back that it is in the middle. So I'm just checking that quickly. Okay, and then you'll go pop this in the oven for half an hour, and then we can start sanding this bit if you want to. You can sand the back if you want to, and then we do want to seal these sides, and then we can start with the PBO paint. Okay, so these beads are out of the oven. And I've checked the paint on their sides as well, and I've given it a quick scrape with my finger. And it's pretty well stuck on there, I can't actually scratch it off. So unless you took some sanding paper to it, it really wouldn't come off. I've put it under water, and unless you soak it, it's also not going to come off. So you can leave it the way, you, well, the way it is, or you can seal it with some barathane or whatever you want. But I'm just going to leave it the way it is, it seems fine, and it looks fine. So I've also sanded this one as well, as you can see, and I'm going to sand this one too, but I just wanted to show you this. And I've also done the back, as you can see, so it's quite striking and it looks really nice. So I like that we've brushed a little bit of paint on there. So you're going to start with your lowest grit of sandpaper, and I'm using polishing papers today, and this is a 400 grit. Now the difference between this one and this one is that you don't want to sand this mica powder area. You only want to sand this area. With this one you want to sand the pearl white and that and the bale, if you can. This one you only want to sand this bit and the bale. And don't sand the backs or the sides because it's got paint on it and so if you sand it, it will come off. So this one I'll start with my 400 and I'll work my way up to my 8000. And I'm going to sand the bale and the one side of the bead. And by sanding the bale, you're going to get rid of any fingerprints that might have been on there. So you'll just slowly sand it, take your time, make sure you do it properly. And then when that's finished, 
we can apply the PBO paint. Okay, so this one's sanded now and you can see it's got a nice light finish to it. Same with the bail. So we'll start with this one and you always want to start on the flat side. Well, not really, it's not really a rule, but I prefer to start on the flat side and this is where I'm going to be putting the PBO paint. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'll bring over the PBO paint and they're the colours that I was talking about earlier, plus the almond green. Now you do want to decide if you want these colours. So just let's bring over that PBO paint that we have here and see if it matches. I don't really like that one. I think that one's a little bit too yellow for my liking. So let me just bring over this colour to tie it in. I think that one's also a bit too bright. Okay, and let's see if that matches with that pendant there. Yeah. Okay, so you just want to make sure with that. So the ones that we're going to be using is the Moonstone, the Turquoise, Almond Green, and Leaf. So I'll mix those up. Okay, so they're all mixed up. I'm just going to take a little bit each colour and I'm going to drop it over here. And then I'm just going to streak it across like that. And it doesn't matter which order you do these colours in. And just wipe away any spills that you might see. Okay. And I'll carry on doing this until I've covered across here, but you only will be dripping it across over here. You want to leave enough space over here for you to drag it out. Okay. Now just take your skewer. And go across like that and it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of colour contaminate, it doesn't matter if your colours cross. Just slowly work that PBO paint up. To get these so that you have these drips. And just carry on doing that and if you're you just need to be careful not to let your PVO paint uh, come away from the edges too much like over there just carry on streaking and if you need to dip back into your pot and add a little bit more paint so that you have a fairly thick layer because you want these streaks to basically reach to the edge over here and then when you've done that you want to leave this to dry for at least 24 hours. And so when I'm done, I'll leave this to dry and then I'll show you what it looks like. And I'll do the same with the other bead too. Okay, so I've let the PBO paint cure for about three days now. And now don't worry, the, worry about these little bits, that's just me testing some design ideas. But basically this is what the PBO paint looks like right now. So I was just taking some of the mica frills and little dragonflies that we've cut out already and placing them on to see what it looks like. And I decided that it didn't really, um, it wasn't bold enough for my liking. These dragonflies were really cute but they didn't really stand up against the background and the mica frills kind of blended in with them and so I wanted um, some dragonflies that were going to stand out a bit. So let me just move these mica frills off to the side and we'll probably use those in a little while. And then I've got the dragonflies off here. So this is what we have at the moment. You can see that it looks really cool. We've got some streaking, some bubbling and all sorts of things. So that's really nice. 
and also it's cured to the touch so that's good so I put those off to the side for the moment and I'll bring over our PBR paint skins which have been curing and now one of them was the one that I showed you and that's this one and that one's quite nice but I don't think it's going to stand out as much as I'd like so I'm going to keep that one as well but I had one PBR paint where I had some onyx which is basically the equivalent of black in PBR paint and some red and I do believe let me go find the PBR paint okay so with this one I used onyx and English red here you can see that I got this from Linda's art spot and then with this one I used emerald which is a really nice bright green I used English red some onyx and some moonstone which is some silver and so it's up to you if you want to create these but I just thought they would be nice to make some of them so now we can have a few things for our dragonfly scroll so I'll just bring over that punch again and we can start punching out some more dragonflies Oops. so let me just smooth over this one corner it's giving me a little bit of trouble now the nice thing is, I sure, can't remember if I pointed this out before, but you can see now whether your entire dragonfly is covered. So that's it. Cut that out. And there's what it looks like. So you can see that one's quite striking. Okay, and I'll cut out another one. There we are. And I'll cut out some dragonflies from these as well, and I'll show you what they look like when I'm done. Okay, so here are the dragonflies now that they're cut out. So what we want to do is we want to put some of these little microfills that we cut out on first. So let me just move those over a bit so you can see what I'm doing. And we want to plan what's going where because we want to bake these mica frills but we don't want to bake them on um, because we're going to be putting this in resin so I'm just deciding which ones are which I think that one will go there there we are okay and I'll decide for this one too okay I think that's enough. Now we're going to take some of our little dragonflies. Let's see if these red ones look nice. They actually look really nice, actually. I think they look nice. Anyway. So I'm just going to put one of those on there. I don't want too many because they're quite striking. And then we've got one of these lovely little jet black ones. And you can decide where these are going to go once you've um, put a thin layer of resin over so that they actually stick. But this is the stage where you want to plan and decide which dragonflies are going to go on which piece and so on. Then pick through these ones and see which ones you like best. Oops. These are quite fiddly. You might want tweezers. See, that one blends in quite a bit more. But it's nice to have one that blends in a little. Okay. And then if I can, I want to fit that one on too. So let me scooch this one over. Okay, let me see if I can use this brush to help me. There we go. Um, I'm going to put this one here. There. So you've got an array of dragonflies on there. So you can decide what you want. Um, it's nice to have all of these little extra dragonflies. So maybe um, keep those and maybe I'll do a project with the extra dragonflies in a little while. I'm not sure if I will, but keep them. I probably will show a tutorial using those extra little dragonflies. But there we are. That's what this is going to look like. And it's going to have a nice layer of resin, which is going to be nice and glossy. So I think it's going to look nice. And we can arrange them as we want 
um, later on. So if you changed your mind and didn't want so many colours in one bead for instance, uh, you could change that as well. So what we want to do now is we want to take these little dragonflies off and keep them separate because you've decided which dragonflies go with which bead. And then take these mica frills and pop them in the oven for about half an hour. And then when those are fully baked, we can start with the resin and assembling everything. But you do want these mica frills baked before you put them in the resin. But just keep these dragonflies separate and make sure you know which mica frills go with which bead. Okay, so these pieces are baked and so I've put them into their right place on these beads and so they're ready to go. Um, I've also thought a bit about the dragonflies and I've decided that I want the red and the green and silver dragonflies together and the black and the blue ones together. So this is the original sheet that I showed you how to make on the video. This is the black and red one. This is the black, red, silver and green one and this is the green and silver one. So those are the ones that are going to go together. So I'm going to start by moving these out of the way because we now want to start mixing up our resin. So you're going to need a mixing cup and some ice resin or you ice resin is preferable because uh, UV resin it might get hidden under the dragonflies and things so it's better for you to use a resin that isn't um, UV dependent. So I'm going to use this ice resin plunger and the nice thing about this is it measures out the resin perfectly for you and you can use as much or as little as you want without worrying about waste. Okay, so let me just pop that back on and get that out the way. Okay, and then I'm just going to mix that up. And that's pretty easy. So it's measured it out perfectly for you. You just need to make sure that you mix this up properly. If you don't mix it up properly, it's not going to cure. Now you don't need a UV light to cure ice resin. I find that you don't even really need direct sunlight. Uh, generally, I leave the ice resin overnight in my studio here and it is pretty cured by the morning. Generally, 24 hours is necessary to get it to completely cure. Uh, putting it in direct sunlight will cure it faster. Generally, it will cut the time in half if you have direct sunlight, but it's not necessary. It will cure um, whether you have in sunlight, UV light, or just no light whatsoever. So I usually cure it overnight and it cures perfectly fine. So I'm just going to continue mixing this and then I'll probably let it rest for about five minutes to let all the bubbles rise to the surface and then I can start assembling our piece. Okay, so the bubbles have popped. going to bring over our mat. Sorry for the colour. And what I'm first going to do is I'm going to put down one layer and now I'm moving fast because this is a little warm. And I want to put down one layer, a thin layer. And this is going to stick our mica frills and things to the base of the bead. So you want just a thin layer. And just gently bring it to the edges, but don't go, um, don't put too much resin on or go too close to the edges that you spill right off of the edge. It's a fine line before between going too far and not far enough. side and I'll bring these over and I'll pop them in. Here we are. 
they're not going to bring over the resin again. And I'm gently going to drip over the top here. And now we're probably going to have to do two layers. We'll see about that, but I have a feeling that we're going to need to do two layers of resin. Okay, so what you're trying to do now is you're trying to cover up this marker frill so that the entire top of it is covered with the resin. And so I'm just busy stamping it down with my piece and brushing the resin over the top. Just like that. Then I'll bring over the little dragonfly. I'm just going to pop these down where I want them to be. And I want to move this one over just a bit. And with the resin you can move things around. And so sorry if I've gone a little quiet but I am Concentrating. There we go. Okay, then you want to take that and just gently press it down so that resin spills over it. Then you'll take the rest of the resin and pop that over the dragonfly. Just make sure that you do get everything with the resin and then later on if we need to we'll add another layer uh, so to get it to have a nice dome. But we'll see if we need it, we might not need it. I've done just enough resin for me to fill in this piece so you can see. Now I'm going to look at it from the edge and see if there are any areas that are poking out that haven't got resin on them. Like there, that dragonfly was poking out a little bit. Okay, and I think we might want another layer of resin later, but for the moment that will work. So then you're going to let that cure for about 24 hours at least before you do anything. And then we can add another layer if we need to. And I'm debating on whether I want a layer of resin over the top of this or not. So we'll have to see about that. And then just watch it for a little while and see if any bubbles pop up back here. And if they do, just take a straw and gently blow to get rid of them. And you might find that some bubbles do get trapped, like over here there's a little bubble down there that got trapped. You can work those out um, and get them to rise to the surface and then you can get rid of them by popping it. Just like that. Okay, so I'll let that cure and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so these have been curing for around... 36 hours and so they're nice and properly cured and I managed to get it so that we don't have to put another layer on so you can see there that it's got a nice smooth film of resin and it's really nice because it um, creates a really cool effect and I'm quite happy with how it looks. Uh, this one I also like quite a bit but it is I prefer the background on this one. I think it just looks a little bit better. Um, I also think, and this is up to you depending on how much hassle you want to go through, 
it's better to have the bale connected to this bit which is the raised bit rather than this bit which is the bezel so if you can see here hopefully it can see that there hopefully there you can see that the resin spilled off and I had to do a little bit of cleaning up the front here but the resin spilled off on both sides and you can see that it's around the bale over there now that's fine but it's not as tidy as this one where you can see the resin has not fallen off and it also means that the resining process is a lot tidier as well so personally if you're going to make this I'd attach the bale to this part rather than this part so that's basically it though so let me just bring these up close for you guys to see you can see there that it's nice and shimmery and this part if you let it dry for at least two weeks before you wear it uh, it should stand up to pretty good wear and tear if I try and pick at that with my nail I'm gonna have to really try hard and intentionally try to break it before it actually breaks so that's pretty good so long as it's a nice thin layer of PBO paint uh, it should be okay to stay there like that if you're worried about it you can seal it with resin but I think that's going to ruin the effect between uh, this and this and this one I've just strung on a necklace which is a pre-made rubber cord it's really easy to just string on through the bale and it's quite effective because you want most of the fo all of the focus to be on your pendant over here you can try a little bit more of a comp more complex string technique maybe you want to do a kamihimo piece or maybe you want to do multiple strands of silk through the bale but I think that just pop it on memory wire or the rubber cord will do just fine and so that's basically it for this tutorial and so I do hope that you found it helpful and I do have to say thank you to one of my subscribers because they were the ones that actually gave me the idea for this Back when I did my mica frills tutorial, uh, which was part of my twisted branches tutorial, I do believe, uh, someone suggested, I can't remember their name, and I'm not sure if they want me to mention their name, so I'll just keep it anonymous. Uh, they mentioned that the mica frills would look quite nice in green with dragonflies. So I did a little bit of discussing uh, with my family and we all came up with some really cool ideas and we decided that we should do PBO paint, the mica frills and the dragonflies after PBO paint so this is actually a project that was constructed with a lot of outside ideas and so I have to thank a bunch of people for that um, it was a really cool project and I really am happy with the design so that's basically it and I do hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next tutorial bye for now